Good evening. I'm Tricia Craig from here at Yale and U.S. College, and it is my great pleasure to welcome all of you to a very special rector's tea. Yong Wing has a lasting legacy of Yale in China. I'm so pleased that we can have people finally in person. This is one of our first um, in-person events, and it's great to see so many people coming in online. We have a very diverse group of people on Zoom, and I want to give a special shout out and thanks to Sam Wong and the Hong Kong, um, the Yale Club of Hong Kong for co-sponsoring tonight's event. And I also want to say welcome to the large Yale community of alumni here across the region. Long before Yale and US, Yale University had a historic and close relationship with Asia. And in large measure, that's due to one person, Yung Wing, who was Yale class of, of 1854 and the first Chinese person to graduate from American University. Tonight, we have his grandson, Frank Young, to talk about the man, his times, and his family. Frank Young came to Singapore uh, as a young man in the 1960s, having spent World War II in Shanghai, boarding school in Hong Kong, and university in Scotland. Today, he's retired, having spent a long and illustrious career in the corporate world in banking, telecommunications, and other sectors. Before I turn over this evening's proceedings to our guests, I just have a few announcements of a housekeeping nature. First, we ask that you please don't take screenshots or record tonight's session, but don't worry because we'll have the video up on the college's YouTube channel shortly. And second, we wanna hear from you. We want this to be interactive. So if you're here in the audience, we'll have microphones during the question and answer session. And if you're joining us on Zoom, please put your questions into the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Now, it's my pleasure to turn this over to my colleague, Ku Huneng, who is one of our professors of life sciences here at Yale and US and rector of Saga College from where we're recording this evening in the beautiful Saga Rector's Common Lounge. Huneng, please. Thank you very much, Tricia. And welcome to Saga College, uh, Mr. Young. And we're really looking forward to hearing about your illustrious grandfather. Uh, and so uh, over to you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am most honored to be, to have, to be at uh, Yale NUS to have this opportunity to talk about my grandfather. Many years ago, in fact, to be precise, about 30 plus years ago, I, I served as the, uh, on the advisory committee of business administration of NUS. Uh, the function of the committee, there were four of us, was to give feedback to the dean on the performance in uh, business of the, the graduates. The dean was quite kind, uh, and some years he, he actually gave us a lunch. At one of the lunches, we met where the guest of honor was the vice chancellor, and someone asked him, what is, in his opinion, the most important subject? And without hesitation, he said, history. And he elaborated to say, it's not history of what year the French Revolution and that sort of thing. He meant if any student, for instance, in medicine, is un unfamiliar with history of medicine, then he will become a lesser doctor. And ditto with an architectural student who was not familiar with history of architecture, he will become a lesser architecture in, in due course. So in my talk today, I will mention two aspects. One is the history of Yong Wing's Im impact, and secondly, the family connections, the Yong family and also his, the family of his students. Yong Wing was born 1828 in Nanping. Nanping is a tiny little village on the other side of the water from Macau. In those days, it was the part of the Shangsan County. And Shangsan County is now split into two. 
the, uh, the, 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 the part which Nanping belongs to is called Zhuhai. When he was a young boy, his parents sent him to Morrison School, which was an English-speaking school in Hong Kong. The objective was quite simple. Anybody who is good in English will have a better career uh, <laughs> later in life. The principal of Morrison School was one Reverend Samuel Brown. Samuel Brown comes from Connecticut. And unfortunately, he wasn't in good health, so he decided to go back to his home, go back to New England. And one day he announced his retirement, and he also asked any of the boys, these boys were like 15, 16 years old, any of the boys in the class would like to go back with him to get more edu a greater education in uh, opportunity in uh, New England. And according to my grandfather's book, his autobiography, he was the first boy to jump up and put up his hand and said, here I am. And the Reverend Brown took two other boys back to, with him to New England. They're both called Wong. One of them, uh, and they, they when, when they settled in New England, they went to a, a co college in Massachusetts, Monson Academy a High School. And one of the boys re returned to China because he, his health was all good. The other boy, Wong, went to, uh, after Monson Academy, went to Edinburgh and was the first Chinese to study medicine in Scotland. After Jung Wen finished with his high school, he had a, 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 a challenge. He needed funds for his entry into Yale College. And here comes Reverend Samuel Brown again. Through his connection, there is a Ladies Association of Savannah based in the state of Georgia. Who, who agreed to provide funds for my grandfather for his four years in Yale College. In Yale College, he studied medicine, uh, mathematics, Latin, and Greek, none of which he was very strong at, but he's very good in an English language. While he was studying and uh, aged between 22 and 26, he developed a dream. He had, he had he, his recognition was China was very poor in many aspects and back, backward in development. He wanted, his dream was to have many, as many Chinese students as possible to be educated like he, he had the opportunity. And that was his dream for, the, for, the, for his career. I'll, I'll give a sh short uh, word, talk, speak shortly for, on, on China. China, of course, is a great civilization. And based on many years or thousands of years of harmony and stability, Confucian, Confucius teaches Loyalty to, your, to the emperor and piety to your parents. And the emperor ruled like a mandate of heaven. However, like for, let me get fast forward to the Qing dynasty, which was the last of about 2,500 years of, of the, the, more, the more modern Chinese history. There were 400 plus emperors during this time. Every time there's a change of emperor, they were not great uh, inspirations. There were many, many wise and good emperors who served their people well. I don't, no doubt about it. But when they reached the Qing dynasty, they were inefficient in many spheres. And the 
ruling court had zero understanding of the market, zero understanding of finance, and they avoided uh, innovation. As far as dealing with foreigners are concerned, they look down on foreigners and have the false sense of superiority. And all that structure led to subsequent humiliation of China. As you all well know, starting from the Opium War, we had sort of almost a century of humiliation. Yong Wing had graduated, sorry, Yong Wing graduated from Yale and returned to China, somewhat of a misfit, because after 10 years in the, in the US, he had almost forgot his native language. He had to relearn his Chinese. And he, in the minute, when I use the word misfit, in China, all the bright lads went to take exams in the Hanling Academy. The Hanling Academy is the top academy where it le leads to ca a career in the court. And, the, and finally, ultimately, in, uh, if, you have, if, you have, if you're really good, you could be the, the court and the, in, the, in the emperor's court. Yong Wing sought employment in with his, with his, because of his language skills. He worked for the American uh, Commission and he, uh, he had a, a job in a, in a court in Hong Kong as an interpreter. But he made some money as a, as a, as a merchant. In China, in th that time, for 14 years, there was a great rebellion. This rebellion is the Taiping Rebellion. And the leader was Hong Shouquan. After several years, he succeeded in conquering a, about one quarter of the chi land in China in the middle, in the middle, uh, middle of China. And to give you an idea what a huge rebellion it was, 20 million plus people died in the 14 years when they were fighting with, between, between the Taiping soldiers and, and, the, and the Qing, uh, Qing soldiers. Yong Wing had the opportunity to meet with the number three prince of the Taiping regime in Hong Kong. And as a result of which, they got on well, and as a result of which he was invited to Nanjing, the capital of Taiping. And he came into Nanjing and he presented a uh, seven point proposals. And this proposal, I, I won't go into detail, uh, but this proposal was basically how to run a government. Yong Wing not only offered this proposal, but he offered to say and implement some of the, uh, some of the pr proposals which he was more familiar with. Unfortunately, Hong Xiuquan and his Seniors, uh, rulers were farmers and populists. They were not well educated, and they, they were actually Christians, but they were not well educated to understand this proposal, and it was turned down. But they offered my grandfather money and a title, which he didn't feel he was he was entitled to, but he refused it, and he left. The Taiping Revolution was defeated by a Qing general called Zheng Guofan. Now, this is the, the, the next opportunity for Yong Wing. As the first one, the Taiping was not taken up. Zheng Guofan was not only a general, but he was a scholar and a statesman. He was, after he defeated the Taiping, he was made viceroy. A viceroy is in charge of several provinces. He had heard about Yong Wing's skill in, uh, as a foreign student in language and in English. And also Yong Wing had also had an episode where he raised funds to 
rescue many refugees. And Chen Guofan heard about him and asked to ask him to come to uh, uh, his headquarters to interview him. And Yong Wing was initially very suspicious because he thought he had been uh, trying to contribute to the tai Taiping revolution and maybe he, would Chen Guofan want to chop his head off? <laughs> But his friends told him, no, 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 Senko finds a real gentleman. And then, then he, anyway, he went and they got on very well. And as a young man, Yong Wing was 35 years old at that time. He respected Senko Fan very much. And Senko Fan also made use of Yong Wing. And his first, well, ultimately, after several years, his proposal for Yong Wing is he wanted to set up an arsenal in China. And Yong Wing was assignment was go to go to America and to buy machinery for the arsenal. Yong Wing made a counter proposal. He said an arsenal itself is not enough. He wanted to make a machine shop that made everything. Made it was a machine shop that made agricultural machinery, uh, machinery that makes everything. Like you, therefore, you need to buy lathes. Drills, planners, planers, and all of all the machine shops. And here was this young man entrusted with acquiring all this uh, heavy heavy stuff. So he went to America, and oh, sorry, let me go back. He went to he there was those those days no letter of credit, so. He went to America carrying with him 68,000 teals of silver. Each one teal is about a bit more than an ounce. When he came back, it was set up the Jiangnan machine plant. And uh, please remember this. That was the first, first manufacturing plant in China. Before that, there was no machinery, machine plant in the whole of China. Yong Wing not only set up the machinery plant, he set up a training school for the technicians so that there'd be a constant skill labor. After that, he had the confidence of Zheng Guofan and he put up his dream project, the Chinese education mission. From now on, I'll, I'll call the word CEM, the Chinese Education Mission. And Chen Guofan was supportive of that. And the, the project was put on a paper to send to Beijing. However, <laughs> there was a delay of three years because the prime minister of China at the time, his, his mother passed away. In the Chinese custom, if your mother passed away, you have to have a mourning period of three years where you do not attend to do not attend to mundane matters. I don't know. I don't know how to, how they draw the line. We do not attend mundane matters like a project of, like the CEM. So it would have been faster by three years if that uh, sad tragic episode didn't happen. But anyway. Yong Wing returned to China from United States and he, he was 17 years later, which was typing, uh, unsuccessful, and Chen Guofan before he got this approval for the court. And in his autobiography, he said he couldn't sleep for days after he got this. He was so excited. The CEM project involved 120 young boys 14 to, sorry, 11 to 14 years old. And they will go in batches of 30 in four successive years. The program will last for 15 years and they would have Chinese tutors in go to America with the boys so that they, they will continue with the, the Chinese language. Now, Yuming was overjoyed, but his difficulties, Another, another hurdle came. Can you imagine him going to parents' home and say to the 14-year-old uh, 
11- to 14-year-old parents and say, I'm going to take your son for away for 12 years or 15 years to America to study. It's like going to the moon. <laughs> for the risk, as, as risky as today, more risky than going to the moon today. So he used the low-hanging fruit approach. He went back to his hometown. He got five relatives, five youngs, his cousins and etc., nephews. 40 from the Shangsan, including the five, 40 from his, the Shangsan County, and including the, the Shangsan County from his province of Guangdong province, altogether 84. Now, 84 amounts to more than two thirds of the total number. The other, the other numbers come from the rest of China. After he had the numbers, he put them in a prep school in, in Shanghai to prepare them for for the for the for the U.S. Uh, education. When they arrived, they were in silk gowns. This is a very well-known picture. They were in silk gowns, pigtails, and spoke no English. Yong Wing made arrangements to for accommodation for the boys in twos and threes in private American home. The logic is very simple. They have the warmth of home living. And the most important of all, they will learn English much faster. They would absorb the culture, the values, and the relationship. Also, more readily, other than if they, if they, if they stayed in the, other than if they stayed in the dormitory. Hartford at that time was already the, an important insurance uh, commercial uh, center of the United States. And the other well-known uh, well sort of uh, claim to fame of Hartford was it was the residence of Mark Twain. The CEM had a, two commissioners. A, a more senior commissioner was called Chen Lanping, he was, a, point, he was a, a scholar, a Chinese scholar, appointed by the Qing court to be in charge of the Chinese students. Yong Wing was the co-commissioner. Chen Lamping, in addition to the, uh, his, his function at the CEM, was also minister to Washington, D.C. Yong Wing was the deputy minister uh, in Washington, D.C. They, uh, in fact, constructed a building, the CEM house, where the students did, this, uh, did a tutorial with, uh, with the Chinese tutors and gathered for uh, various instructions, etc. A great misfortune happened at this time. They, Chen Lanping returned to China and the, his successor was a, a more uh, a person who singularly lack of talent and had no idea of uh, Western culture. So this person sent negative reports back to uh, China. And Chen Guofan unfortunately passed away many years ago and a new viceroy, Li Hongzhang, was a patron for this CEM project. And Li Hongzhang, when he had the, all these negative reports, the negative reports involve the children, the, the young boys becoming very westernized, forgot their Chinese culture, and cut their pigtails. Some of them even, with a great sin, became Christians. So the mission that CEM was recalled after 11 years, it was a great blow to Yong Wing, his greatest blow in his life. The irony of this was some months later when Yong Wing was back in China, he met his, the patron, in, uh, the, 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 of the, the, the viceroy in charge of, he met Li Hongzhang 
And Li Hongzhang said to him, why did you accept the, the recall uh, instructions? And Yong Wei said to him, if I disobeyed that this thing or put up resistance, I would have, an, it's an imperial order. I would have my, could have my head chopped off. So that was the tragedy of this recall uh, of this, uh, the CEM. Now I will say a few words about the 120. Yong Wing was extremely fortunate. His role, his role in history would not be the same if his, among his 120 young boys, there was so, uh, such a large percentage who were talented, patriotic, and willing, to, you know, enthusiastic, willing to work, con contribute to the society and the country. And let me, I, I'll, I'll just mention a few of the outstanding ones. First one is Tang Guo'an. Tang Guo'an is, was the first president of Tsinghua University. Next, Tang Shaoyi. He's a person in the center of the, of the thing. That was him going to India, negotiating with the British about with the British intrusion into Tibet. Now, interesting about this photograph is this young man on the extreme left is my maternal grandfather. He was an assistant to Tang Shaoyi. He was taken to... Uh, he was taken to Tibet in the negotiations. Next, Jem Tem Yu. Jem Tem Yu is without doubt the leading pioneer of rail, railroad and railroad building in China. Before that, China, there was no native uh, locally built uh, railroad in China. Next, Liang Tun Yen. Liang Tun Yen is, was the, the foreign minister. Tsai Shao Ji was the first principal, first president of Beiyang University in Tianjin. Now the next four young students, I will, they are all very special in the sense that their descendants are very either related or very close friends of the Yong family. First one is Yong, uh, first one is Yong Hoi. Yong Hoi worked as in the Sun Yat-sen revolution as Sun Yat-sen's, one of Sun Yat-sen's assistants. His grandchildren are very close to my family even today. Next, Chong Man Yu. Chong Man Yu was a Yale coxswain who was, because of his small size, was the coxswain in charge uh, of, of the, the boat race against Harvard, and he won, won the boat race twice. His, one of his daughters married my mother's brother. So we have common cousins, and uh, first cousins, and, and including our distant cousins with that family. Next, Li In Fu. Li Infu was one of the young boys who did not go back to China. He, in fact, uh, dodged the recall order and stayed back. He married an American lady. Now, I have more stories to tell about Li Infu's grandson, who is called, who is Richard Lee. Richard Lee, the grandson, is uh, was a professor of anthropology in University of Buffalo. He tells us the story, like he tells his own family story. When he wanted to get married, he went to tell his father. His father was a naval officer and called him into the library and he said, son, do you know your grandfather is a Chinese? And Richard said that was the first time he learned that his grandfather Li, was Chinese, the name of Li Yinfu. But Richard is, was very proud of his Chinese ancestry. 
Many years later, he lectured in China, and he tells a story. When he tell, finished the, his lecture, he would say, my grandfather is a Chinese. And the audience, the Chinese audience would go silent. And then he would repeat, what do you say that again? And some of the Chinese audience actually laughed because they, they thought he was joking. I go on to the next uh, a young lad, young boy, Yong Kui. Yong Kui was another young man who did not go back to China. He stayed back. He's a cousin of Yong Wing. He stayed back and Yong Wing financed him. He went to Yale and he finished his studying in Yale. He married an American lady and his he rose to become charge d'affaires in Washington, D.C., the Chinese embassy. And this picture shows him taking the former prime minister of China to see President Coolidge. The interesting thing about this picture is this gentleman on the, on the left side is my maternal grandfather who who was, a, who was a handling scholar and then rose through the ranks and become prime minister for a short while in the nationalist government in those days, or pre-nationalist government in those days. When the recall uh, came, there were two of the students, young boys who were already old enough to finish college and the both of them finished in Yale. And there were 40 other young boys who were studying at, at the university level. And some of them actually went back to finish the co college. Now, I will tell you a very important account here. At the, roughly this time, in America, the through uh, uh, labor movement, and they were developed a very anti-Chinese uh, sentiment. So the Congress actually passed the Chinese Exclusion Act. The Chinese Exclusion Act forbids the Chinese from being a citizen. The important thing I want to say to you is only two states in the Congress voted against this when they went to the whole US Congress. And I give you no prize money for, to guess who these two states were. These two states were Connecticut and Massachusetts. And let's guess why, why this two, this Congress went for these two states voted against it. Because the, the 120 students lived in these two states only 120, not thousands and thousands. And they created such good impression among the American community for decent uh, people and the relationship with their, the, the family, the, the relationship with their adopted parents was so good and with the, the whole community and the towns was so good that the congressman actually voted against the Chinese Exclusion Act. I now will speak a few words about the descendants of these uh, CEM, the, the young boys. We, the, the more, we, we had a, a, what they call a, a, a reunion or a gathering in 1998 through the effort of Richard Jung. Richard Jung it, is Jung Hoy's grandson and a very close relative of ours. He organized a, the, the first, uh, what he called is CEM Descendants Reunion. And in fact, we never met, but that was the first, first time we met. So we had, uh, we had it in Yale University itself, and Yale provided all the facilities. In addition, the governor of Connecticut was very generous. He made a special 
he, he made he, he made facilities available for us and welcomed us and speeches and he uh, there was a there was in fact one uh, he, he put, produ- sorry the, the, the next line he produced a, a, a order to say that that day a certain day was going to be in Connecticut the Young Wing and CEM day. The Connecticut Historical Society was also very welcoming. They had a reception for the, there were four, only four families, including my family. There were only four families attended this uh, reunion gathering in, in Yale. The Connecticut Historical Society gave us a reception and made the usual welcoming speech, et cetera. And I was pushed forward and then without warning, without sort of wanting to give a responsive speech. And I was, I was, I had to eat a lip and being sort of not uh, prepared. I was, all I can say was I was, I'm not a, a worthy person, except I'm the grandson of Young Wing. So anyway, after that, I felt I needed a drink. So I went to the drink counter and a gentleman, a Connecticut gentleman came up to me and he didn't introduce himself. The first word he said to me was, never apologize for good genes. That was the time when I realized I had good, <laughs> first time I realized I had good genes. Subsequently in 2011, there was another uh, reunion in uh, another sort of uh, descendants gathering and also in Yale. And, and unfortunately due to 9-11, I did not attend. But my my uh, this this the second person on the on the left is my my son David. He he had, he was in New York at the time. And he attended on behalf of the family. And following that, we had three more gatherings, all in China in Zhuhai itself. And the benefit of having this in Zhuhai was there were many professors and academics and authors who were authorities on, on the subject of Yong Wing and, and, the, and the CEM and the young boys, their subsequent life. In the year 2000, I, uh, the, a, a company in uh, Hartford, United Technologies donated a photogra- photograph, uh, sorry, a portrait, and it was the donation was held at Richard Levin's. Uh, Richard Levin is the president of Yale. Was held in his 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 home. Now, I will say about the CEM descendants. Many of these descendants are very accomplished people. They are entrepreneurs, they're professors, they're doctors. They are, as I say, contrib- contributors to the, to, the, to the society. And I met them. If I met, I met well, my, my first meeting with them was something electric happened. I, immediately there was a, a relationship connection. And without no time, we become the warmth of the friendship developed. And two or three of them said to me, if it not, were, were not for your grandfather, we would not be where we are today. And my, so, Oh, and my response to that was, if it not, were not for Reverend Samuel Brown, none of us would be here today. So, what is one minute? Four. I can't finish. No, I can't. It's okay. It's okay. 
one little bit more. Now I will say a few words about family. Yung Wing married when he was 47 years old, and my father married for a second time as a widower, widow, widower, when he was 57 years old. That explains a great gap between uh, age, between Yung Wing and myself. My father, Morrison, passed away when I was only a few days old. My mother was an educated lady, but she did not know much about Yong Wing. So the only thing she said to me was, Yong Wing, your grandfather was the first Chinese to be a uh, to, to, edu- to, to be a uh, graduate in an American university. And to me at that time, it felt like somebody who is the first man to climb a mountain or swim a channel. Only when I was a teenager and I studied in Hong Kong, then I was approached by many, not, not, not frequent, but every other year, somebody would approach me, sought me out. He would be a professor or academic or an author and let me have a book. And then uh, that's how I learned at the beginning of my, my knowledge of my grandfather and his family. My grandfather married, as I say, 47 years old. And he was fortunate enough to have a very good friend, Reverend Joseph Twitchell. Yong Wing said to his friend, he doesn't think he can marry a Chinese lady because he so, spent so many years in, in America. And he added that he doesn't think an American girl would marry him. And Joseph Twitchell and his wife said to him, very strongly, you are wrong. And as a result of which, Yung Wing married my mother, grandmother, Mary Kellogg. Mary Kellogg's family was one of the families that accommodated the young boys. And Joseph Tuchu was or has always been a good friend of Yung Wing. When my grandmother sadly, tragically passed away after 11 years of marriage and my young wing traveled all over the place, my father and his brother, Bartlett, stayed with the Twitchell family. Joseph Twitchell was not only a solid and good friend of young wing, but he was reputedly the best friend of Mark Twain. When the recall order came for the students to be the CM to be recalled, Joseph Churchill went to Mark Twain and also to former president Ulysses Grant. And these two wrote letters to the Qing court to ask them to reconsider the recall, but without success. I have here a family tree of Yung Wing, some of the people will be uh, sitting in this, <laughs> sitting in this audience. I will, the, uh, the, the, the sad part was my, the, the, the Morrison branch is produced like seven grandchildren, but the Bartha branch unfortunately didn't have any descendants. I will say a word about Elsie Jane, my cousin, right in the third line. Elsie Jane worked for many years in New York. And when she was seriously ill uh, about uh, 20 years ago, I, my wife and I went to New York and fetched her back to Zhuhai in an old age home. And this is worth mentioning because the superintendent, there were many old age homes in, in, in Zhuhai, but we cho- I chose the, super, the old age home with the superintendent just by, because she said something to me. She said, for Yong Wing's granddaughter, I'll do anything. And that gave me great confidence that my cousin, who we were already in, in her 80s, will be well looked after. 
In addition, I called the local party secretary, whom I know, and said, my cousin is coming back. And he said, he said the same thing. He said, for Yong Wing's granddaughter, bring her back on a, on a tourist visa, and I'll sort out the immigration, uh, sort of the, the resident uh, uh, status later on. Now, here's a story I'd like to tell you. In fact, this, the important official forgot to formalize L.C. Jane's residential status. And one of his young, one of his junior staff called me several years later, very excited. The way he called, called me in Singapore, he's never done that before. And she said, do you know, every six months I had to go to the immigration and ask for your cousin's uh, residential uh, uh, application and always had some difficulties. And a week or so ago, my boss, the party secretary, called the immigration head and said, do you know, a few days ago, the general secretary, that's the word he used. The general secretary, Wu Jintao, made a speech in Yale and spoke about Yong Wing. And here you are, he referred to the immigration head, here you are giving his granddaughter trouble, for, uh, uh, difficulty in getting, getting her into residence. And this young uh, junior star was so excited. He told me after that, no more, no more difficulties. Every time I will apply, she, I'll, I expect to get through right, right, right away. And she was so sort of triumphant. And I, I share, her, share her sort of feelings. Anyway, I, I'm blessed with many strong friendship with the CEM descendants, for, you know. Here I want to digress. Yung Wing was not just a education educationalist. He had he never ceased serving his country. I'll tell you three or four stories. So one when he was in America, Li Hongzhang found out that the Chinese laborers in the South American state of Peru was being very ill, badly treated. So he sent Yong Wing to do a study in, uh, do an inspection in Peru. Yong Wing was smart enough, he took with him two Americans. One, his brother-in-law, Edward Kellogg, and the other one, his good friend, Joseph Tichel. And the three of them went to Peru and Yong Wing was smart enough to take some pictures. And in these pictures, it showed these Chinese laborers being uh, ill-treated. And then sent, he had these pictures sent to sent back to China, and that was the end of the, the Peru, uh, like uh, slave labor, or the Chinese slave labor. In 1894, there was a Sino-Japanese naval battle. The Chinese got wiped out because the Navy was not in the same league as the as a, as a, etc. And Yong Wing found out this, and he, he was commissioned to go to London. In fact, it was the own idea to go to London. He went to London for the sake of raising funds, raising funds to fight the Japanese. Why did he go to London? Yong Wing worked out that in the, the, the security for raising the funds would come from the Chinese custom revenue. And the Chinese custom revenue at that time was managed by the British. So the British are familiar with the Chinese customs, etc. Now, here's another story that illustrates the backwardness of Qing administration. You know, the, the, the custom revenue was in, in foreign management. Anyway, go back to the, he, so Yong Wing succeeded in obtaining $800 million worth of pounds of, 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 of funds the funds will be used to buy uh, uh, ammunition and furthermore to obtain a few thousand 
foreign mercenaries to fight the Japanese. But the Qing government rejected this and it didn't get any, get any further. Yong Wing was also at this time, quite late in life, was in the 70s. He was a well-known reformer. These two per persons, one is Kang Yu Wei and the other one Liang Qi Cao, they are China's foremost reformers at the time. And they come from the same true and the Pearl River Delta as, 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 as my grandfather. So, but Yong Wing was, because of his seniority and, and his uh, name, was admired and respected by these two uh, historical figures. And they, in fact, promoted, asked him to be the president of the National Congress. Now, the, the name National Chinese National Congress is wrong because it's a Chinese name, and I just, I just translated it. At the same time, the Dowager Empress Cixi was in charge in Beijing. The Dowager Empress uh, was a power was a power-mad lady. And the emperor, uh, Guangxu, was five years old when he ascended the throne. And as he uh, uh, aged towards, uh, towards uh, late teens, he became sympathetic to the reformers' cause. And because of that, the dowager empress, Cixi, banished, banished his, the, the, the young emperor, and in fact had him locked up and immediately start searching for the reformers. And he found six, she found her, 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 her followers found six of them and they were de decapitated. And Yong Wing had to make a, a run for it. This, when he was in Beijing, he ran out from, he ran out into his house and got onto a carriage. And I saw this in a video film of things. So I don't know how, how true, historically true it is. Yong Wen got into this carriage, and the soldiers chased this carriage, and the head, the captain of the carriage, uh, captain of the soldiers, drew the curtains, and he saw Yong Wen, and the captain, the young captain, gently closed the curtain, and then dismissed the soldiers, and the, you know the reason why? Because this young captain was one of the one twenty <laughs> boys. The last story was when Yong Wing was going to retire and he went to, took out a ship and got on to go to America. The ship stops in present day Taiwan. Those days called Formosa. The, 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 the governor of Formosa was that time under Japanese rule was somebody called Kodama. Kodama got, got to hold see, see Yong Wing and Kodama got see Yong Wing came up with a piece of paper said, here you are. This is a arrest warrant from China for you. And Yu Wing said, if, 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 you want to, if you want to arrest me and take me, send me back to China, then I'll have an honorable, honorable death. And Kodama said, no, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be a Chinese pro policeman. And then they had a they had an interesting talk. And a few minutes later, Kodama brought up another piece of paper. This piece of paper is a newspaper report of somebody from China going to London, arranged 400 million pounds of funds to buy ammunition and get mercenaries to fight the Japanese. And Kodama said, who is the author of this? And Yu Wing said, it's me, but I'll, I'll tell you something. It's not 400 million, it's 800, I asked, I asked for, and I got 800 million. And he, had a good relationship with this, uh, this uh, governor in, 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 uh, in, in Formosa, who offered to, to, he said, I'm going back to Japan very soon and I'll, I'll take you with me, but Yong Wing refused to turn it down because he was going, going back to America. In closing, I would like to mention there was an article by the magazine, The Economist, who uh, it was, it was about a year or so ago, 
and mentioned that the Chinese students today in America had great difficulties with the American immigration policy. And there, there's 370,000 Chinese students. And it also mentioned, of course, Yung Wing being the first Chinese students, et cetera, and then the, the recall, et cetera. And generally, the, the, the tone was very negative. Now, I like to offer a different view. Yung Wing was not just an educationalist. His big picture was the backwardness of China. He wanted to, he spent all his life trying to, trying to uh, pull China out of this backwardness. Today in, today in Yale, there's a statue uh, donate, it's a, it's a, sorry, it's a bronze statue donated by the Zhuhai municipality and it sits in Yale, Yale College. And also in the Yale Sterling Library in Yale, I, the, the, the portrait I, I, I saw earlier was, was on, was uh, now I, I believe is uh, placed in the Sterling Library. In the New York City, there's a school in Chinatown named uh, Thing. And uh, my, my son Miles is uh, the, the picture there. This school is not just for Chinese. And let's go in fact for the, for the local community. In China itself, two, uh, two Chinese presidents, Jiang Zemin in early uh, uh, 20th century and a few years later, Hu, Hu Jintao. Jiang Zemin made a speech in Harvard and Hu Jintao made a speech in Yale mentioning the first Chinese student, first Chinese graduate. They reckon everybody in the, in the education community recognized Yong Wing as an icon, a cultural icon. In Zhuhai, there are museums and schools named after him. And in uh, in Guang, Guangdong, uh, there's a Zhongshan University and there's a, there's a statue after him. What I said earlier was Yong Wing was not just a contributor in education. He had a major hand in initiating the struggle to pull China out of the backward, backwardness. If he were alive today, he would be gratified of the development in China and his success. Thank you, gentlemen. Wow, thank you so much, Mark. This is just an amazing story of uh, just such a wonderful, remarkable man. Um, I wanted to just share a little bit about how I think that your grandfather might have also paved the way for you know, many American universities to start giving out uh, scholarships to foreign students. And I, and together with many of my friends uh, from Malaysia, uh, was also a beneficiary uh, of that. So, wow, thank you once again for that wonderful talk. So, um, you know, before we head into the Q and A uh, segment, you know, for our in-person audience here, you just need to put up your hand, and someone will come along with with, with the microphone. Um, for our online audience who are on Zoom, uh, you can send your questions to us uh, via the Q and A chat box, and and we will ask your question on your behalf. Okay, so uh, floor's open. Is it question? Oh, okay. um, this is not a question, but it's like appreciation to your grandfather. Um, I'm uh, here a second year student at Yonis College and I'm coming from China. Uh, I came from a public high school in China and um, we learned a lot about your grandfather on our his uh, history textbook. So yeah. And also, I think one of the students in CEM, 
um, he became the principal of um, the famous uh, local university in my hometown, Zhejiang University. And yeah, his name is Zhu Kezhen, and he also um, helped a lot for um, give funding for my high school. So I think I um, really appreciate this. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So we have a number of questions uh, from our online audience. Uh, so let me ask you one from Joe Chan. I read that Yung Wing was involved in uprising activities, the Red Dragon Plan against the Qing government. Did he ever collaborate with Dr. Sun Yat-sen in the founding of the Republic of China? Yes, he, he did. He, he, was in, he was introduced to Dr. Sun Yat-sen uh, by his cousin, Yung Hoi. And uh, he, he was many years senior to Yung, uh, to Dr. Sun, and he, so, he voices support for Sun Yat-san's uh, revolution. And Sun Yat-san, in fact, uh, wrote a letter asking him, when, he, when Yung Wing was in America, 80 plus years old, Sun Yat-san wrote a letter to him to ask him to return to China to continue to work for, work for the revolution. And fortunately, my grandfather was within days of his uh, passing. So he, he could not, he, he did not reply to the letter. I am told this letter is in, in, in Nanjing the, today, there's a Zhong San Ling, which is the, uh, which is the uh, monu, uh, memorial of Dr. Sun Yat San. And one of my cousins went and visited this thing. And he said that letter from Sun Yat San to my grandfather is in a glass cage. So I've never seen it, but it was, I'm told it's still there. Uh, well, I'll, I'll, there are there are more questions. There are more questions from online. Um, Ethan Lee would like to know what are some of the key life lessons or opinions that you've learned or formed from Yung Wing's journey and experiences. Sorry, I can't. I can't have, uh... What are some of the key life lessons or opinions that you have learned and formed from Yung Ming's journey and experiences? Well, uh, he is, uh, you know, at first everybody just said he was a first, first graduate, et cetera, and that was like the end, and he, he, put, he, he had a CEM. But his legacy is he never stopped contributing to his country. You know, the, in the Qing dynasty, the Chinese got uh, like a loss, the opium war and then the subsequent wars and a great humiliation. And he, he, his mission was always to pull China out of the, uh, pull China out of this backwardness and then make it, make it, make him, make China strong. That, that's 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 the lesson I, I learned. Ne never never give up and continue to learn, continue to contribute. There's another question from one of our colleagues here at Yale and US. You mentioned that the CEM initiative came to a sad end after only 11 years, and it was Young Wing's greatest regret in life. Coincidentally, Yale and US College, as a once visionary educational mission, also has been given a closing date. I wonder what your vision is with regard to this historical coincidence. How do you think history will mark the closure of Yale and U.S. College? I I don't have a great op sort of a, a, a serious opinion on this, other than what I read from the the newspapers and the comments. Uh, I personally feel it's a great loss in the, when if Singapore doesn't have the Yale name. Yale and US, apart from everything else, puts a, a top college name in Singapore. So I felt, I felt, I personally feel the loss, but I, 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 I cannot comment in addition to, you know, I don't have any sort of other additional comments. Just, I just feel the loss. We have a couple of questions uh, kind of about um, how, this legacy in history is presented. So Nick Chen, uh, class of 79, who's the president of the Yale Club of Taiwan, 
wants to know, have there been any efforts to document all of the CEM descendants? Document? The CEM descendants. Yes, uh, the, there, there is a research, there's a, there's a formalized research institute in Zhuhai. And I know the, the uh, director very well, because we, we, we talk and then he, he gives me lots of information. Uh, he keeps a record of all the descendants. Uh, and it's up to the descendants to submit their, their, their records to him. When we had the uh, mini conference in Zhuhai, uh, I, I'll give you an example. The, one time there was about 30, 30 families attended and I was uh, told to chair that session. And I said to, uh, I said to them, I said, because there are 30 uh, families, I will give each family three or four minutes. But of course that, that didn't succeed. They, were, they went on to talk and talk, talk for 10 minutes or more. They tell the history of these descendants, what they, were, what they are doing. They are all over the world. They are, they are, they are, they are of the Chinese race that in America, there are other, other people in very, different parts of China, all very, uh, I would say, serious contributors to, to their community and society. And here's an interesting question uh, from Eugen on behalf of Tsinghua and Yale alums. Is there any connection between Young Wing or the CEM boys and the Boxer Rebellion Indemnity Fund? Uh, I, 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 I only hear this. I, I, I mean, I'm not, I didn't research this. Uh, the history of the Tsinghua was, uh, sorry, the, 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 first you had the Boxer uh, Rebellion and they was defeated and China had to repay eight countries, uh, compensate eight countries, including America. America was the only country that said, we'll give you, return you part of the compensation to, to you if you build a university. And they built a university, the Tsinghua University. And and this is the part which I'm not sure of. Somebody, uh, in fact, it was it was a director of the research institute who told me one of the one of the young boys, he went to school in Yale. I don't know with Theodore Roosevelt, and through their friendship, and that helped the return of the uh, uh, compensation to to start off Tsinghua University. I'm not. 100% sure of the, the facts. I only hear, this is only why, uh, like a hearsay, but the, the, it's a... Uh... And um, with, res with respect to the promotion of mutual understanding between the US and China, Cal Yu says every little bit counts. For the Jung family and the Jung Foundation's activities in mainland China, could you give us a brief introduction? And he wishes, best wishes for all the efforts in that direction. Absolutely, certainly. I, 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 I so extend my best wishes to the to the, the the foundation because to me the friendship and the, uh, the, the competition must go on, but the the, the must comp compete in in friendly terms of the two great nations. And finally, I think this is our last question. Um, Miranda Liu, I think, is suggesting perhaps um, a project for you. Do you have any plans to turn your grandfather's life into a movie? There has been a, a video film of uh, Yong Wing uh, by, the, by, by, by the Chinese of CCTV. There has been a film, which is like a four-hour film. Uh, I, I, have the, I have the video, etc., so if... I have, I have copies of that, so if anybody is interested, I can uh, give, the, give it to the library. Yeah. Well, thank you for that kind offer. We probably will take you up on it. <laughs> okay, so thank you everyone for joining us tonight. Uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this session. Uh, I know I certainly have. I've learned so much.
for our online audience, uh, we would love to hear about your experience too uh, this evening. And so you may scan the QR code uh, that you see on the screen uh, or by using the link in the chat box. Uh, again, for our in-person audience, you may also scan the QR code that's placed on the reception table on your way out uh, to, to give us your response. And once again, thank you everyone for coming to join us this evening. Uh, and thank you, uh, Frank, so thank much you. Thank for you, coming to share those wonderful stories uh, about a wonderful ancestor. Thank you.